really appreciate that you take out your time and we can share uh, uh, regarding our BS6 bonds. Uh, but before we do that, you know, whenever I come to this room and start to speak on the stage, uh, and I do that when we do town hall with our people, I normally tend to ask a question. So that impulse is coming back to me. And that question normally is, how are you feeling today? Hmm? You will ask me a lot of questions later on. Maybe I can start with asking the first one to you. So how are you feeling today? And whenever I ask this to my people, I also give them a score it's between 0 and 10. Right? And 0 means you even wonder why do you exist on this planet. <laughs> and 10 means this is the best day of your life. So shall we start with that, if that is fine with all of you? Well, you know, it's also very important to ask you this question because your mood has a large influence on the mood of the nation, isn't it? So that's why I'm very curious to know. So any zeros in the room? Okay. So there's one zero in the room and you wonder why we exist on this planet. Any tens? One ten. That's a good sign. Ten. What about eight? Seven, five, some people are not answering. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. So we have a very, very spread up variety, I would say. Normally, when I do this with my people, I get 70 to 80 percent in the range of eight and above. And that for me is a good sign that we are passionate and energetic even in these times. Yeah. Sorry? I couldn't get you, sir. No, I don't think that's the case, but you are not, right? So, it's very important that at this time we also work on positive narration of what's going on. Isn't it? Well, uh, let me first start by saying, uh, Thank you once again uh, for coming today. And why today? Because today is a very important day in the history of this company, India. Because today we are going to show you our readiness for the six, which is the most important regulation the automotive industry has faced in India. And we will also uh, take this chance to give you a glimpse of the SCR technology which we use and which is globally proven for its efficiency and reliability. But before I jump into those details, let me show you what I will talk about today. So these are the topics which I will talk about. I will start first with some socio-economic trends which also have played a large role in the implementation of ES6 next year. <coughs> then we will talk about BS6 and of course we will also then show you how do we leverage Make in India with the implementation of this technology. We will then talk about market situation because I think that's also of interest to you and a very strong need for some policy reforms which I think are desperately needed at this point. So, before we jump into the details, let's start first with a big picture. And I think all of you know the entire automotive industry is going through a lot of disruptions. And these disruptions are so significant that they will shape this industry in a totally different manner in the next few years. And on this chart, you can see on the left side the key drivers of the change and in the middle, what is expected out of that. You can see climate change, uh, and we see a lot of change happening in our climate globally. And what is driving that is a regulatory framework or a pressure to decarbonize the entire environment. You can see shifting consumer demands, mainly from ownership to shared mobility models. And we see technology which is enabling new business models which help the customer to save costs on one side and enable OEMs to 
we find new revenues for us. But today, we will focus on the top two things, which is urbanization and economic growth. And we know the most important indicators for us, what does this mean? This need to increase the mobility demand, and the downside of that is it leads to congestion, it leads to air pollution, and it leads to the fatalities of the road. Well, let's look at how urbanization is changing the face of our planet. This is a very important slide you can see here. In the last 30 years, 1985 to 2015, we added 2.5 billion people on this planet. And what is very shocking is that out of this 2.5, 2 billion people were added to the cities. So that's the urban population. And you can also see what is the trend of urbanization. From 41% in 1985, it is expected to go to 60% by 2030. Which means 60% of the people on this planet, 60% of 8.5 billion, which is a large number, will live in the cities. And if you see further, you can see some dots here. Roughly 10% will live in, live in very large cities. Now what's happening in India, and the story is, if not more scary at least, for the similar picture. We see about 40% of Indian population by particular team living in the cities, and about 25%, sorry, about 25% of that living in large cities. Now these are very scary trends, these are very frightening trends, and we still have to figure out how to deal with those trends. Now, if you look at the ranking of India in terms of pollution, out of top 20 polluting cities, India has been given. And roughly 5% of our population is living in those cities, and maybe many of us are a part of that. And we can't underestimate the health effects and the impact on our GDP due to this population. What is very shocking, and this is not being our population, that 141 cities in India have already exceeded the PM10 standard. What is PM10 standard? It is the particulate matter size, which is highly detrimental to the health. And there are 141 cities in India which have already crossed this standard. There are 19 or 20 cities which have also crossed the top standard. Very scary times. And I think that is what was the motivation for the government and the industry to act on. To act strong and to act fast. And what India is going to do, no one has done so far. It took 12 years for Japan and it took 8 years for Europe to shift from the Euro 5 equivalent to a Euro 6 norm. And we are not only skipping PS5, but we are doing it in three years now. So the entire industry has done a lot of hard work in the last two years to make that happen. I'm happy that most of us are ready to implement this technology in the next few months. Now when it comes to PS6, this is not a new technology for us. In fact, you will be surprised to know that we in Diamond already have more than 1.4 million trucks and buses running on the road at the same time. And we are doing this in more than 40 countries. And we by now have more than 9 years of solid experience in PS6. So the, what we are going to do now is going to bring this globally proven technology. We are not going to experiment with customers but give them the best which has proved in different countries around the world. Now let me come to a very important part. Uh, in the last few months, we have seen a lot of media coverage on DSX. And there's one very common question I have seen in that coverage. It's good that we are doing that, but what is in it for the customer? What is the customer going to do? Of course the trucks or the buses or the cars will be more expensive. The emission levels will go down, so it's good for society. And then, what is in it for the customer? And that is something which we are also going to challenge. Since the time we came to the market, 
we we have lowered our leadership in the in offering the lowest total cost of ownership to the customers. With implementation of the ESX, we are going to challenge this further, which means we will further increase the fuel efficiency of the trucks from the ESCO, and we will further reduce the maintenance cost of the customer, which means our service intervals will be better than what we have today. Along with that, we will upgrade our entire portfolio with the new distributed platform. So, in a nutshell, if you have to say what is different with Daimler, we will come to the market with VSX with a globally proven technology. We will even enhance the total cost of ownership which the customer gets from us. And I think that is something which is unmatched by anyone so far. Most of you know that uh, since the time we came to India, we also had a strong strategy for the stores. Now, BS6 offers another opportunity to us in the future. With that technology with us, we not only can continue to supply products to the markets which will shift to BS6 or equivalent norms in the future, but it also gives us a chance to add new markets to our portfolio. So, our clear plan is latest by 2021 or 2022, we will start to export BS6 trucks to different markets. We have already some ideas here you can see on the slide, three countries at least, which are the starting point, and we will continue to explore new markets as we proceed. With the BS6 engine ready with us, this also is another chance, and we are already looking at can we export this engine to Europe and use it for top highway applications in those engines. Now coming to the market. Uh, and this slide shows you how the market has done in the last five years. I think it's a great story. From a level of roughly 180,000 trucks sold last year, we actually doubled the entire market. Now, these are medium and heavy commercial vehicle products, and these are for January to December, because that's the calendar we are for. So, just to clarify that, you get the numbers in perspective. Now, this market. Uh, took the effect of BS4 production, which happened in 2017. It also took the effect of GST and D1 conditions. Everything was absorbed and still the market continued to grow. But the story changed in 2019, or let's say towards the end of 2018. And what led to this change? But there are two or three main things which led to this change. You know, in July of last year, the government introduced the new axle load norms. And that axle load norm simply meant that each truck can carry 20 to 25 percent more load than they were used to. Earlier. Now, this was not only applicable for the new trucks which were sold, this was also applicable for all the trucks which the free product had. Now, what does this mean? You, from one day to the other, have 25 percent more capacity. Now, we did a very quick calculation. When will this capacity be installed? If the economy grows at 7% GDP, right, it will take more than two years to consume this capacity. And now we all know that the economy is not growing at 7%, but it's rather growing at 5%, which means it will take even longer. The second effect came due to GST. GST was done after a lot of discussions and deliberations in this country. And now, this has a negative effect on truck sales, but we have also looked at positives. If there is no pain, there is no gain. What we have seen, and we have talked to a lot of fleet owners, GST has of course simplified the filing of tax uh, while you are moving on the road. And all the fleet owners have performed to us that the capacity of the fleet has gone up by about 20 to 30 percent just because of the implementation of this. And I think it's good for the economy because historically India has had very low levels of fleet We were in the range of 30 percent. So, in a way, the implementation of GST has helped the utilization of fleet, but of course, it has then a short term impact on new currencies. And the third and the most talked about reason, I think you all know, is the MPFC prices or the liquidity crunch, which we also know that the government is dealing with. 
appropriately. Now, if you also see on this page, you see that the trend is worsening. Right? From 5, 10%, it has now come to 15, 60%. And I think this is happening because of correction of the net fees by the entire industry because we prepare for PS4 to PS6. Now, what will this all result in? Our projections say that the market, which was roughly 378,000 trucks last year, January to December, will end up in the corridor of 270 to 290,000 trucks. So, which means the industry will go down by 25 to 30 percent. <clears throat> what is our projection for 2020? Well, if you look at other markets, where Euro 6 was implemented. We have seen that even a strong market goes down by about 10 percent and we are not in the strong market today. So our expectation is in 2020 also the entire market will go down by about 10 to 15 percent which means it will be in the range of 230 to 250 thousand And then once we have gone through this exercise, we believe that the Indian economy will go on improve and will lead to coming back of growth in the range of about 10 to 15 percent and coming back <coughs> coming back in the range of 270 to 290. Now what would change this picture? What would change this picture? There's a lot of discussion, GST reduction or scrappage policy. And let me clarify what is our viewpoint on that. When it comes to GST reduction, we believe it will have a very marginal and consequent, consequent effect on tax sales. And why I'm saying so? Because this is exactly where we will differentiate between cars or universal cars. The fleet owner is buying a truck when he needs the truck. When he has a demand for it, he doesn't buy because it's cheap. Right? So we believe GST reduction will have a very large impact on prices. But what will definitely help is these private models. Because then the fleet owners would really be motivated to replace their own trucks with better emission compliant and more fuel efficient ones. Now, when we come to scrappage policy, Let's look at some very ambitious targets which come into the asset. I don't know whether you have read about them so far, but you can find them on these websites. The Government of India has already announced that they want to reduce the emissions intensity as a percentage of GDP by more than 30 percent by the year. That's a very, very ambitious target. And the second target comes from our Prime Minister that he wants that we should reduce our oil import by 10 percent by 2020, which means in very short time. Now we roughly import about 80 to 90 million metric tons of oil. The trend so far is on the other side. It's going more than 100. And now we have to take this down. And that's where we believe that this practice policy will be helpful. Since the time the Indian market started, and you can imagine the population of vehicles on the road, never ever the scrappage policy was done in an organized way. We have very unorganized players who deal with it the way they want to. In fact, they cause more pollution by scrapping the vehicle or keeping it on the roadside. And we believe this is a very good chance with the implementation of the ASX norms to have an effective and successful scrappage policy. And why do I say the implementation of the ESX norms? Well, the ESX trucks produce the same NOx level as one BS3. Well, it's the one. And NOx is the most dangerous in the pollution. And 10 BSX trucks produce the same level of particle matter as one BS3. Which means with implementation of BSX, there's a very significant gain in the energy. At the same time, we have to understand implementation of DSX will not reduce the pollution. We will only add less. 
Many people think that BSX is coming coalition will go down. No, it will not go down. We will only add less going forward. But what will bring it down is implementation of standard policy. Then you will really take out the more polluting and less fuel efficient vehicles from the road. And we did a very quick calculation. If 50% of BS2 and BS3 vehicles, trucks on the road are taken out, what will we save? We will save roughly 2 million metric tons of CO2 a year and we will save roughly 780 million liters of crude oil a year. Now these are very substantial figures. This 2 million metric tons is roughly 4% of the pollution produced by trucks. And I assume only So it's a very conservative effect. Now what will make a scrappage policy successful? So that's another thing which we should think about and not just rush into it. We need to provide proper incentive for someone to scrap. Most of the people who have these old vehicles are second or third or fourth vehicles. And we need to provide the proper incentive that they really go and scrap them. Second, we need authorized scrap centers. Scrap centers which use recycling and reuse as the philosophy and not just scrap. That is another thing that we need for the government. Third, we need to have a scrap certificate which is tradable. So, someone who goes to scrap his vehicle gets the value but also gets the scrap certificate. We have to understand many times this third or the fourth owner is not interested to buy a new one. So, if you want to bring the growth back, you have to make sure that this scrap certificate which is then generated can be sold at a proper value to another one who is interested to buy it. Which means the government has to now work on it. We need to come up with authorized scrap centers and we need to define a full mechanism to handle this entire process. And I think that's what the government is working on. But we see that with implementation of BSS, this is a great chance for India to reduce its pollution levels and to reduce the oil problem. Now let me come to another topic, uh, which has not been talked too much about. You can also reduce pollution or oil import by having more fuel efficient vehicles on the board. And as I said, we have been leaders in this, and that's why we strongly advocate that the government should, as soon as possible, implement the fuel efficiency norms for trucks. They are under discussion for many years now. There are two types of norms, and we strongly pitch for HDMC norms, which means for each segment of vehicle, you have a norm which you are supposed to fulfill, and not on your overall population of vehicles which you produce. We strongly pitch for that and in fact, we are saying why should we even stop there? We should follow the example of other countries, for example Japan, where there is an incentive for the customer if he buys a vehicle which is more fuel efficient than the norm. And this helps everyone, it's actually a win-win situation because the customer gets tax breaks when he buys a more fuel efficient vehicle. The manufacturers then are motivated to produce more and more fuel efficient vehicles. And the government saves on pollution and oil import because more fuel efficiency means less consumption of diesel oil at home. And we again did a very good calculation. If the entire industry follows 10% better fuel efficiency than the norm, we will save another 2 million metric tons of CO2 and a similar figure on the oil flow. So all in all, by doing just these two things, we could save our pollution by about 10 percent, which is a great achievement. And the same is for the diesel. In fact, Japan has already implemented this, where a, a customer who is buying a more fuel efficient truck or a car has to pay lower toll tax. So the government saves money out of fuel import and gives a portion of it as an incentive to the customer. It's a different situation. Coming to my last page, uh, and this is about safety. To recall, in the beginning, we have talked about pollution, pollution, and fatalities. 
And this is about safety, and this is something which I can't understand. You know, we just saw that within three years, India took the courage to move from DS4 to DS6, and we are almost there. What are we doing about safety? So while on the mission, we are exactly coming to the global best. But when it comes to safety, we are far behind. Isn't it better that we do it in a synchronized manner? I think we all know the statistics of accidents on the road. We are talking about 150,000 deaths a year. 400 people die every day on the road. And it's very hard to believe that while we will be the first one in the world to move from DS4 to DS6 in three years, but next year, India will be the only country in the world which will have a DS6 truck with a wooden frame. It will not even have a factory Which means this is how the trucks will work. And just that you are aware, this is 80% of the long term, 80%. We never participated in the segment, and I take this uh, I, I take this chance now to give a call to, the, to everyone, to the government and to the industry, to use this chance of PSX and switch to factory. Well, that was all from my side. Thank you very much. I would now invite my colleagues, Robert and the uh, They are technical experts. Uh, Robert is the global platform lead for uh, VSX, start from Germany, especially for the speaking today, and Pradeep, who is our vice president of Harmony, who will give you details about the SCR technology of VSX, our preparation uh, and readiness, and also what benefits does it give to the customer. Thank you very much.